Welcome back guys. I am so excited to be back. So I've got a few products I'm working on and the first one is I'm going to be dealing with this shotgun right here. So as you guys know, or some of you might know, this shotgun is the least tactical weapon in my arsenal and I like to keep it that way. I bought it because it's a standard, you know, Remington 870, no pistol grip, no rails, nothing like that. To me, this is kind of like the home defender kind of weapon. That's why it's long, that's why it's bulky, and that's why it looks dope. Uh, but if I was to make this even less tactical, what could I do? Well, you see, it's still got this nice black polycarbonate furniture on it, uh, and I want it to not have that. So, a lot of Remington 870s, or at least the ones you look up, they'll have wood furniture. Uh, and of course, this is like a $70 spring shotgun. Where am I gonna find wooden furniture for something like this? Uh, I'm not. I'm going to paint it on, and today that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do. All right, guys, before we get into the painting, it actually just occurred to me that I should teach you how to remove the furniture. It's real easy. On the, uh, on the pump here, there are two screws at the bottom, and after you remove them, it's going to split in half on each side right along the seams. Uh, and on the back here, there is this big old screw, and you take that off, and the stock will just slide right off. As it turns out, once you get half the handguard off, there's another screw right there that seems to be keeping the other half on. So you gotta take that out too. All right, now we're in the shop. As you can see, I have the uh, pieces of plastic, uh, polycarb, whatever they are, detached from the shotgun. Uh, and I thought it'd be good to tell you exactly what you're going to need to do this project. Uh, first off, you're gonna need some sandpaper, uh, kind of rougher sandpaper. Here I've got some 180 grit, I've also got some 320 grit. Uh, and what, you're, what that's gonna do is that's going to uh, take off the uh, finish. It's gonna roughen the surface uh, of these pieces so that the paint can bond to it. Uh, after that, we are going to hit it with some uh, spray paint, uh, essentially. This is like a, this is a khaki color, beige works, almond works, whatever. Uh, and that's just going to give it a nice light base. This is the only spray paint that you're going to need for this project. Um, you're going to need acrylic paints. Um, I've got various forms of brown. Uh, this is just, uh, this is chestnut. Uh, this is burnt umber, which is a darker brown. Um, this is straight black. Uh, for those, you're also going to need paintbrushes. Uh, so I went up and picked up some paintbrushes too. Um, and then lastly, you're going to need clear coat. Uh, I'm using a, a glossy clear coat because I want the wood to, or the, the fake wood to look somewhat glossy. Um, but if you want it to look matte, obviously use matte. Um, so first we're going to sand on the pieces, then we're going to spray paint them. Then we're going to use the paintbrushes and we're actually just physically going to paint out with acrylic paint uh, and we're gonna we're gonna clear coat that to seal it. Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of The Joy of Painting with Algorithm Studios. Right now we're taking some sandpaper, we're using the rough 180 grit sandpaper because I want to see that real nice grain in the wood. We use the rough sandpaper so it gives nice crevices in the plastic to kind of imitate that wood grain. I found that on the larger pieces, like the stock, you can actually move in circles to imitate knots in the wood. After I finished sanding the pieces, I washed them off and wiped them up with a rag. Now you can see how much of the finish is replaced by a grainier, duller look. Now here we go with our first coat of spray paint. Always remember to use nice, even, long strokes when using spray paint. Don't worry about coverage because we're using dark plastic, so I expect it to take two or three coats to get the color I'm looking for. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some of our chestnut and put it a little on this plate. Remember guys, that a little goes a long way. Next, we're going to take our wide brush, just dab a little in there and then wipe off some of the excess and then just stop brushing. You're going to want to brush in line with the grain that you sanded with to give it like a real wood look. Now look at this, isn't that just beautiful? What you have here is because you're only using a little bit of paint, you gain the stripes from the bristles, which gives it wood grain. The trick is to really take your time, because if you get too much paint on your project, then it's not gonna look like wood, it's just gonna look brown. Unfortunately, I did put it go a little heavy on this first layer here, but I still think it looks pretty nice. I'd like to take this time to thank our sponsors, literally no one. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. 
Alright, once you're happy with how your paint looks, you need to seal it with some clear coat. You need to clear coat between every layer of painting between the colors so that the colors don't bleed into each other and mess each other up. What I do is I just do one really nice thick layer of clear coat, uh, make the wood look nice and glossy, let that dry, and then I come in for the next layer of paint. Now we're going to dip into our burnt umber. We're going to use a lot less of this paint than the other one because we don't want to overshadow the, the chestnut that we've already put down. So first I'm going in and I'm going to try and fill in these little divots in the handguard with burnt umber because in real life if you stained wood, these divots would be darker than the rest. So I need to make these nice and dark. After that, painting the rest on is the same process as before. You just want to use a lot less. I also suggest getting a little more creative with your brush strokes in different directions so you can really see kind of some cross grain. As you can see here, the piece I'm working on has now gotten much darker than the other piece. So if you're doing this and prefer a lighter wood, you can skip this step or maybe use a lighter paint. Personally, this is perfect for me because I prefer my wood dark. After this, I'm going to clear coat it. Moving on to the stock, we seem to have a problem because when I lift it off the paper, sometimes it removes some of the paint that I put on. However, I don't think this is an issue because when you paint over it with the next coat, it just seems to look like a blemish in the wood and it turns out fine. As you can also see, I'm starting to paint an eye into the wood. After that last layer of clear coat, now we move into the black. I'm going to be using a very, very thin brush to apply details to the black. First I go into those crevices that I did with the burnt umber first, and then after that I move on to the rest of the pieces. In general, you want to be very careful with the black so you don't have any happy little accidents and you ruin your whole piece by painting it black. I'm still using the smaller wide brush here so I don't overdo it with the black. And I also like to mix a little bit of the black with some of the burnt umber so it seems a little more natural and less artificial. After doing a little more detailing on the eye here, I move on to the grips where I want the texturing there to be much darker as if it was stained darker. After this, I hit the whole thing with two layers of clear coat and I put it back on the gun. And just like that, I am done. I now have a wood furniture Remington 870 style shotgun. So there are a couple problems with it, uh, and all the problems stem from my impatience really. Um, so as you see here, I've got these light spots where the, the foundation that, uh, that khaki spray paint is showing through. That is from me, I guess, not waiting long enough to handle the furniture after uh, after the last clear coat. And I guess what happens is I peeled away that last clear coat and what happened was all the paint underneath it uh, peeled away too. There's some pretty minor spots and if I really wanted to, I could go in with uh, I could go in with some paint and just like fix it all up and clear coat it again. But I don't care that much. I still think that the gun looks particularly amazing. Um, so, if you like projects like these and you want to see me use this gun or you want to see me do more with, uh, with some of the other things, or you have any questions about any of the stuff behind me as well, uh, leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and thanks.